natokinase, seropeptase, lumbrokinase. Three powerful health-promoting systemic enzymes, but what sets them apart? When should I consider one over the other, and what dosage is best? Welcome to Natural News FAQs. I'm Danny Curtin. Thank you for joining me today. By the end of this video, my goal is to answer some of the most common questions about these three ingredients. You will know where they come from. You'll have a basic understanding of how they work, when to take them, and what the best doses are. First, I'm going to give you a short, generalized answer about these enzymes. If you want more detailed information, stay with me for a few more minutes. All three of these enzymes are going to have many of the same benefits. All are proteolytic in nature, meaning they digest certain types of protein. If you've heard the confusing terms like proteases or proteolytic enzymes or protein digesting enzymes, all of these terms are synonymous. When taken as recommended, usually on an empty stomach, these enzymes are absorbed into the blood, where they are able to break down unwanted proteins that can contaminate the blood and irritate the immune system. Because of these commonalities, they will all have the ability to support normal inflammation, circulation, immune function, and tissue repair. However, each of these enzymes shine in one specific area. If you are taking at least one of these ingredients, you are being proactive about your health. As for where they shine, lumbrokinase and natokinase both work similarly. They are able to support normal cardiovascular function by maintaining proper circulation and heart function. Deciding on which one to use typically comes down to price and personal preference. Lumbrokinase, is an extract derived from ground up earthworms. You may not think of a worm as an animal, but it's not a plant, so it's not vegan. It has a higher price point than most enzymes and the amount of human clinical research is lacking when compared to natokinase and seropeptase. But the general consensus by users is that it is very effective. Natokinase, on the other hand, is a vegan enzyme that is microbial derived, meaning it's created by a probiotic. It does not contain soy, which I'll explain in the latter part of this video. It has a large body of human clinical research. You can find quite a few very strong and affordable products on the market, and the general consensus of many professionals and users is that it is a highly effective mainstay in their heart health regimens. And finally, serapeptase, just like natokinase, is a vegan microbial-derived enzyme. It does not contain silkworms, which I'll explain in a bit. Figuring out when to use serapeptase is really easy, since serapeptase is primarily recommended for sinus health and inflammatory support. For acute issues stemming from surgery, an injury, or everyday aches and pains, serapeptase performs the best. It is also highly effective at breaking down and liquefying mucus, making it a natural decongestant. If you are concerned about your heart, your blood, or any other part of your cardiovascular system, you should go with lumbrokinase or my preference, natokinase. On the other hand, anything outside of the cardiovascular system, especially when it comes to inflammatory support, occasional pain, or a stuffy nose, serapeptase is the way to go. Now that you have a basic understanding of these three enzymes, let's dive a little deeper. First up, natokinase. Most people think that natokinase is made out of or contains soy, but this is not the case. Natokinase is not found inside of a soybean. Natokinase was first discovered to be present in an authentic Japanese soy dish known as natto or natto food. I'll say it again, natokinase was first discovered to be present in this common soy dish, but this enzyme is not in soy itself. In order to make natto food, boiled soybeans have to ferment. In order for this to take place, an external component is added to these soybeans to start that process. In this case, the bacterium, or probiotic, Bacillus subtilis, which I'll refer to as B-sub, is added to the boiled soybeans. B-sub is attracted to and would like to feast on the protein in the soybeans, but bacteria can't eat the way humans do. For these microbes, the digestive process takes place outside of the bacterial cell. So what happens is the B-sub creates chemicals in order to digest the protein. This is done during the fermentation process. In this case, the main chemical that the B-sub creates is a very strong protein digesting enzyme called, you guessed it, natokinase, which digests the soybean protein into amino acids, which are then absorbed by the bacterium. Natokinase is simply a tool created by a bacterium that allows it to eat, in this case, soy protein. 
natokinase is not a natural component of soy, which is a common misconception. In order to make natokinase into a supplement, after the fermentation process, the enzyme is filtered, extracted, purified, and isolated. Any good, reputable natokinase product will not contain byproducts from manufacturing, and even further will test negative for certain allergens, especially soy. Natokinase is simply a specialized protein digesting enzyme that is created in response to soy. Give that same bacterium a different type of protein and a similar but different enzyme would be created. As for the benefits of natokinase, they are extraordinary. Mainly a heart health supplement, natokinase cleanses the bloodstream of excess clotting factors, like the protein fibrin, which is an essential building block of scar tissue, blood clots, and it's even involved in creating inflammation. You can think of fibrin as the body's band-aid system. Whenever there's a problem like an injury or an illness, more than enough fibrin is created. Actually, far too much is created. But that's okay because the body balances your fibrin levels by using its own blood cleansing enzymes like plasmin, which breaks down and digests any excess fibrin. So how do the enzymes know what fibrin is needed and what fibrin is in excess? Enzymes in general, and especially natokinase, are what I like to call immune privileged. The immune system marks certain proteins for extermination, and the enzymes then break them down. If the fibrin hasn't been marked, it won't be broken down. So this excess fibrin cleansing system is a normal function of the body. The issue, especially now, is that most people are starting to lack blood cleansing enzymes like plasmin. Up until about three years ago, the enzymes needed to maintain this system would only begin to decrease with age. But now, they are decreasing in people of all ages. In general, most people's fibrin cleansing systems have been compromised. By supplementing with natokinase, you're simply increasing the tools needed to naturally maintain your normal fibrin cleansing system and hopefully clean, healthy blood. What's also reassuring about natokinase for my own personal supplementation and the recommendations I make to my clients is that the human research on this enzyme is vast. As for how much to take, I have seen the most success when users supplement with anywhere from 4,000 to 20,000 fibrinolytic units of natokinase per day. But I have personally seen people go two, three, or four times higher without issue. Remember, enzymes are not drugs. Drugs typically stop enzyme reactions from taking place. All three enzymes that I'm speaking about here today are only supporting normal bodily functions, making overdose very difficult. Moving on to lumbrokinase. Lumbrokinase has great benefits, especially as a natural product, but I do have several issues with it. This enzyme has very similar cardiovascular benefits to natokinase by primarily supporting the excess fibrin cleansing process. Unlike natokinase, lumbrokinase is not microbial derived. It is an extract that comes primarily from two different species of earthworms, Lumbricus rubellus and Asenia fetida. Hopefully I pronounced those correctly. Traditional Chinese medicine has used lumbricanase for centuries. They've done this by drying and then consuming these earthworms in powder form. Mmm. Currently, these earthworms are not collected from nature. They are grown in a Chinese lab, and although lumbrokinase is a proper name, it is not one enzyme either. Lumbrokinase is actually a group of anywhere from 7 to 20 different enzymes depending on the types of worms used. Lumbrokinase itself is very hard to separate from the earthworms. Different products have varying capabilities, and some contain earthworm contaminants, which can cause gastrointestinal side effects, like nausea and possible vomiting. Now, you may have also heard that lumbrokinase is stronger than natokinase. Natokinase is bacterial derived. The activity of the enzymes can be increased naturally during the fermentation process. This cannot be done with lumbrokinase since the enzymes are simply part of an extract. Lumbrokinase may be stronger than some natokinase products, but it's not going to be stronger than the strongest natokinase products. But lumbrokinase makers do not recommend that this enzyme be taken with any other enzymes. Manufacturers make it a point to direct their customers not to mix any other enzymes with lumbrokinase. They say that proteolytic enzymes may completely digest lumbrokinase, rendering it useless. In my experience, multi-enzyme formulas offer the best broad-spectrum health benefits compared to any other type of dietary supplement. Not being able to take lumbrokinase with other enzymes negates a highly effective and one of my favorite natural health strategies. In my opinion, this is the most important consideration when choosing between these two enzymes. 
So for blood cleansing, I think it's quite obvious that I prefer natokinase over lumbrokinase. However, if you're taking lumbrokinase based on your doctor's recommendation, you've had success with this enzyme, then by all means, you should continue to take it. And finally, our last enzyme, serapeptase. This enzyme also has blood cleansing benefits because it does act on fibrin. However, it really overperforms when it comes to damaged tissue. Serapeptase, also known as serratio peptidase, is an enzyme derived from the bacterium or probiotic serratia E15, which was discovered on the skins and in the digestive systems of silkworms. Now, because of this, many people think that this enzyme is made by silkworms or contains silkworms. In the same way, lumbrokinase is made by earthworms, but this is just not the case. Just like we as humans have bacteria in our digestive systems, so do silkworms. And just like humans, silkworms do not create these bacteria either. They consume them when eating. Now, once the silkworm has turned into a moth, serapeptase plays a crucial role in allowing the emerging moth to dissolve its cocoon. When the silkworm has gone through metamorphosis, the bacterium, serratia E15, is responsible for breaking down the cocoon, which is made out of silk. Just like bacteria created natokinase to digest soy protein, the serratia bacteria creates serapeptase to digest the silk. Since silk has a very similar structure to scar tissue, scientists were very eager to examine its effects effects in the human body, and those turned out to be extremely effective and very safe. In fact, many drug companies use serapeptase in countries that allow patents on natural ingredients. Not so in the USA. Serapeptase has been studied and shown to support normal inflammation by digesting injured tissue, making way for new tissue to take its place. It also breaks down certain proteins like bradykinin. Bradykinin stimulates inflammation and pain in injured tissue. By helping to reduce the effects of bradykinin, serapeptase naturally alleviates pain and inflammation. Although seemingly unrelated, one of the most notable uses of serapeptase is its ability to break down mucus and phlegm by digesting its main protein, mucin. This makes the mucus much easier to expel, making serapeptase a great natural option for those with congestion. In my opinion, most people benefit from taking a minimum of 100,000 serapeptase units, or SPUs, of serapeptase per day. But just like with natokinase, I have seen dosages in much higher ranges, anywhere from four to six times that amount. If you find yourself confused because the product you have is rated in international units, or IUs, you shouldn't be highly concerned because international units Units are typically referring to the serapeptase units. But if you're still unsure, I suggest contacting the manufacturer. In the end, for cardiovascular support, natokinase and lumbrokinase are the go-to enzymes. However, natokinase is a much cleaner option that can be paired with other proteolytic enzymes like serapeptase, bromelain, and papain. Conversely, for acute issues and inflammatory support, serapeptase is the way to go. As you may have inferred from what I've previously mentioned, taking natokinase and serapeptase together is the gold standard for enzyme therapy. Wow, that was a lot of information. If you enjoyed this video, please share it wide, like, and subscribe. Again, I'm Danny Curtin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.